Hello everyone and welcome to AKA The Greatest Podcast Ever, where I am joined by some wonderful and weird people. Today, one of the weirder people, and that is, of course, C Tactics Kun Senpai san. Uh I didn't think I was that weird, but now that you say it, I probably need to go get some therapy. I think we all need therapy after those incidents. Let's not you know, I didn't actually remember those incidents until you said those incidents, and then I was like, oh god, they're, it's coming back. It's... Well, I mean, the incidents are what we're going to talk about today, because that is watching Planet With. Oh, that incident. I thought you were talking about the one at Starbucks. No, we don't talk about Starbucks. Oh god, we shouldn't. Yeah, like, they try being plastic straws, and then three people need to go to the hospital, and yeah, so let's just not talk about that. How did that even happen? We're not talking about that. I, you're right. Okay, we shouldn't talk about it. But the question stands, how? how? I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, put down the comments, people. Yes, how? put put in the comments how, and we'll feature the best comment in our next podcast that we do together. Yes, which may be five years down the line. We hope not. It probably won't be. There's a good chance it won't be. So, as you have guessed from the title of the video and that little random tangent... Our topic today is the anime Planet With, which, yeah, we don't really know what the title means yet, but it's about planets and about robots and about heroes and about giant casts and about, I don't know what it's about. Do you know what it's about, C? Uh, it's, it's about a giant cat robot uh, who kind of looks like Isaac Clarke from Dead Space and a cat maid who isn't a cat, she's a human, but she has a weird cat face, and she probably should go to the hospital. Exactly. That's what this anime is about. Exactly. Uh, So, yeah, we have a list of 522 questions, and we're going to talk about them all. Mm Mm-hmm. 522 questions. We're asking you, the audience. Yep. So get ready to answer all 522 of them. Remember, these are not multiple choice. You must cite your sources, and Wikipedia is not a valid source. Correct. Despite what certain professors of mine have said. Yes, that's that's what they all say. I don't know if that's true or not. I still use Wikipedia anyways. I mean, my Professor Wong's taught from Wikipedia. I mean, to be honest, I kind of did plagiarize that paper in middle school from Wikipedia. Like, Okay, now the NSA is going to be after you. Oh, God, no, not the NSA. <laughs> Why did I plagiarize that paper? Okay, so, uh, see, how did you first learn about Planet With? Well, uh, actually, I learned about it when I was just watching anime at the beginning of the season, and I didn't know anything about this anime. I didn't know the original creator of it or anything like that. I, I just saw I saw the cover of it, and I was like, oh, is this a Darling in the Franks ripoff? That's literally what I thought. Um, and then it came out, and I was like, I, I'm just giving everything a shot right now. That day I'd watch like, Haru Kano receive, and I was like, kill me please uh and angels of death and so angels of death will kill you angels of death will kill me uh uh i need to watch more of that uh i didn't like either of those and i was like you know what this day is terrible let's make it worse and i watched planet with and i was like you know what this is actually really good and i'm gonna keep watching this this is awesome and uh you know it's just that's how I found out about it, is I just kind of watched it randomly. Yeah. Well, for me, I was making a list before the season came out of, like, the five anime I was most looking forward to. And I, like, got the big ones, like Attack on Titan and FLCL, I think. But then I wanted something, let's see, what's more obscure that I think might be really good? So I was going down Anichart and saw Planet With and thought, looks kind of cool, let's look at it. So is there an original show? And then I saw it was from the guy who made Lucifer the Biscuit Hammer and then directed by the guy who did Hentai Prince and the Stony Cat. So I was like, okay, this is enough reason to uh, be interested. I've actually not seen nor read either of those, but I wanted to. So that was kind of my logic behind it. And then I think it was the night it came out or like the night right after, C ended up sending a message on Discord saying that he thought this was was the perfect show for me. It totally is, by the way. It is. He was right. And then after I met Abby, fought through the uh, public transportation of Washington, D.C., and then I watched this show. So it was a good night. I, One of those things was good. Probably the Abby thing. Uh, it was this... Taco Bell. It was good. Oh. The whole, just the 
highlight of the trip was the Taco Bell, not any of that. Yes. I mean, you, you got your priorities straight. <laughs> That's more than I can say. Uh, also, I do want to say, to clarify, um, I didn't know that the person behind this was du- directing this, uh, but I did know about Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, kind of, like vaguely, before then. I just knew it by name. Yeah, I had saw the name a while back ago. I don't know if you guys have been following my channel a while, but back in last March, I wanted to do a month of manga reviews, which ended up not happening, but that's beside the point. And one of the shows I was going to review was, or one of the manga I was going to review was Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. So That's probably where I heard it from. Because I, 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 it wasn't too long ago where I heard the name from, so it was probably from you is where I heard that name. No, I actually didn't make a video about it. Uh, I was going tra- to, though. I, weren't you talking about it though on the server at one point maybe are you sure that wasn't our conversation like 10 minutes ago I, d- I don't know I don't know where I heard this this name from but I heard it from somewhere I know a part of it was maybe Garfield uh, I don't know about uh, Garfield would probably hate this I don't know would he I don't know does it have lollies in it well that does raise an interesting question though what type of people do you think would like this anime oh uh, I think it's the kind of people, it's the same audience that I think would like Dragon Ball Z, Kill La Kill, uh, a modern anime fan who doesn't like care too much about what they watch as long as they're entertained. I think this is a very good anime for that. Uh, I also think the audience who like to look into things deeper and, and like really obscure anime that on the surface don't seem too like... Uh, it just seems like it's it's just dumb stuff, but really, if you kind of observe it a little bit and you think about it and you're like, oh, this is actually like kind of low-key brilliant. Right. I think that's perfect for those kinds of people that like that stuff. I think your comparison to Kill a Kill is very apt, too, because Kill a Kill, on one hand, is stupid fun. And in a lot of ways, this is, too, because it just has all this weird stuff going on. But there is a legitimately interesting and unique story in a at least a decent amount of thematic depth so far. So if you like that combination of things, I think this is a good show for you. It also reminds me some of Darling in the Darling in the Bronx Fon- with its like weird storytelling and how it like keeps adding more and more to it, which is interesting, even if I'm not quite sure how well they're actually handling everything. Yeah. And that, and that kind of like goes way into like another question that I, that I think we have later on. And so I guess we just go ahead and get a, get out of the way now, though. Is like, uh, this this anime is so crazy and it feels so ambitious that I think it's gonna probably need more than twelve episodes. I, I it's gotta have something more than that. At least that's what I'm sensing from what I've watched so far. It's just it's so there's like in episode seven we have like a new faction that just got introduced with like new yeah. characters and stuff and like. And then you still have a lot going on with the uh, factions of Nebula and then Earth and then how all that ties together. Yeah. I feel like they might be trying to do this all in one core, though, because it's like halfway they introduce this new faction. If they stop introducing new plot concepts, I feel they could wrap it up in one core, though it would probably feel kind of rushed. Yeah, and I think this... I, I think they could definitely pull off a split core of this at the very least like how golden common is getting a sequel uh in the same year that it it came out i i think that it just it it even a movie would be really good for this yeah or maybe they'll like set everything up in the season one and then season two they just like go into everything explore it more all that yeah like like just like the the big blowout kind of like season or movie or something like that where it's just like like yeah we've been building up this this for for ages now and now it's time to just let it all loose and and see just kind of how it people react to it and all of this amazing you know story answers to all these questions it's asked throughout the story it reminds me some of rewrite which is a visual novel adaptation from like i think late 2016 early 2017 how they had a split core in the first core was like the main route and everything. And it pretty much told a complete story, but then the second season was able to go into the side route and like give it a, the true ending, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
so I know this is an original story, so it probably won't be that way, but like the same general goals. And yeah, that that it also brings up like like the question like this this anime is getting a manga um, version alongside this as this is airing, and I I was just wondering like this is also another one of the questions I have, uh, just like since since this we're getting this manga adaptation coming out along with it. Um, it would, would this be a manga that you'd follow after the anime finishes airing? Because since it's, I think since it's getting a manga coming out, I, I don't think the manga is going to be like a volume or two. I, I think from, you know, from reading a little bit of Lucifer and the biscuit hammer, it seems the stories he tells are super ambitious very vague in the beginning and they're just so massive and expansive um so yeah um i don't think i would probably read the manga just because i'm generally not a manga reader but there are a couple times where i have been interested enough to try it so maybe like when it's done i'd like read the rest of it yeah i i feel the same way uh i think probably going to be picking up this manga after this season is done with if it doesn't get an announcement of a season two like down the line i i i just want more of this anime really <laughs> it does feel weird that they're doing the manga adaptation at the same time like i know they've done it for a couple other shows where it's like they're different or they tell a different piece of the story but this it just feels weird that they're doing it this way Especially for a show that doesn't have a lot of like uh, star power behind it. Like with Darling, everyone knew Trigger, so they were interested there. But here, it seems much more obscure. Yeah, JC staff is doing this one as yeah. well. Yeah, they do a lot, but they don't... Like, people know who they are, but they don't tend to remember a lot of their shows. Yeah, I can't... I can't think of a JC staff anime right now. <laughs> Uh, they did Toradora, Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, Children of the Whales, and a lot of other things that no one cares about. Sounds about right. <laughs> I'm surprised I could think of that many. I'm surprised you could as well. I didn't even know they made Is It Wrong to Pick Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon. Okay, I need to look at my giant anime uh, studio list to figure out what else they did. Uh, So, I guess, like... What do you think about, like, all this crazy imagery and stuff? Like, we, we have, like, the giant cat, Sensei. Uh, we have Ginkgo, who is just, like, this weird green-haired maid cat lady with, like... She's just crazy and weird. Uh, yeah, it's like a lot of this is just, like, really out of the world how they have it here. Yeah, it, it feels, honestly... <laughs> it feels like... This, this guy snorted a lot of cocaine and was like, but what if we, but what if the explosions weren't explosions and it was like, like fluff from stuffed animals? Well, you know what other show this reminds me of now that you mention it? What was that? ReZero. Because you have all these like anime cliches and some of the just weirdness of anime thrown in there, but they're able to do something really interesting with those concepts. Yeah. Like, you have Rem and Ram, which are the maid twins in ReZero, and it's like, okay, here's just a stupid anime cliche. But then when you look at it, you realize, oh, because of that, they can tell a backstory. Like, how do they become maids? What have they been through? And make them really interesting characters. Yeah, I get, yeah. You're kind of spot on with that comparison, I think. Um, but how do you, how do you explain the upside down babies? <laughs> cocaine. Co yeah. <laughs> it's got to be cocaine. Uh, also, it's just like visually speaking, where do you think this show stands up in like all the other anime that's come out this year? I mean, off the top of my head, we've got like Violet Evergarden review. Um, oh God, uh, Starlight. Uh, yeah, review Starlight. Uh, uh, After the Rain, Devil Man, Cry Baby. There's just tons of great visually looking anime that came out this year. Where does where does it stand up? I, I it's it's a good looking anime. Yeah. It's an overall solid one. I don't think it does anything really that amazing. Like with Devil Band, you had the whole like really stylistic thing, which was cool. And here, I don't think it quite is there. So I would not remember the show for the animation. I'll put it that way. But it does help. I think the CGI animation, it, it, 
it's choppy, but I like the models a lot. And I, I can compare it to Inuyashiki in that sense, because Inuyashiki, to me, had really just, at times, below average animation quality. But the CGI models always impressed me because they were so detailed. Um, and that's the same thing I'm finding in this one. Um, I don't really like the like Soya's cat mecha, but I like all the other characters' mechs. And how they look. Yeah, like the seven heroes, whatever they were called. Yeah, yeah. Like their designs and the robots for them was really cool. I, I really like that. And uh, and bes- besides it being pretty choppy and it and it looking bad initially, like it has a really bad first impression when you look at it. But I think as like if you stick with this show past episode one, it it improves so much. It kind of has a Knights of Sidonia effect where in Knights of Sidonia, I hated it. Yeah, with the CGI dragon. Like, you could definitely tell it was CGI and didn't fit, but at the same time, it kind of fits for this weird anime. Yeah, and I love the CGI model for the dragon. I I love it, that the tail, the way it kind of lights up with different colors, and uh, it just, it looks like something you'd see from Dark Souls. It's so cool. And what anime was it i think it was maybe yuki yuna how they had like the uh monsters in there like b cgi and b just really not fitting there might be another anime that i'm thinking of that did it better but just how you have a non-human thing just be look really weird and that fits it not being human i so do you do you think that's on purpose how they're like they have like really awesome you know these awesome cgi models and, and awesome designs but they almost don't fit with, with the world sometimes is is i think that may be an artistic direction on their part that's not executed as well as it should be because you, i mean the upside down walking babies that te- that doesn't really technically fit in the world we've seen so far yeah that just made no sense which makes me think that things that don't make complete sense are supposed to be that way i and <laughs> this anime is just so crazy like there's so many questions you just ask yourself, like, why am I seeing this right now? And why do I not care? But I want to know, like, why? Like, why is all this happening? Yeah, I think it is one of the most anime I've seen recently where I just keep wanting to see more. Fair. Okay, where are they taking this thing? How are they going to resolve this cliffhanger? Will uh, Soya ever get to eat meat? Oh, yes. Will he, <laughs> will he ever get to eat meat? I, I, those. That's a question I ask myself every night before I go to bed. <laughs> um, I ask myself weirder questions than that. Uh, um, I guess there's something I kind of want to talk about. Some of the like side characters, some of the heroes get a little bit of focus. Um, Harui Kumashiro, she's kind of like the girl who has... She kind of looks the closest to uh, Shoko from Silent Voice a little bit. And, and she... I, I like that character. Um, also, Takashi, Takashi uh, Ryuzoji or whatever the, the the guy in the suit that 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 she that that she fights. Uh, what do you think about like these characters like getting the support in the story? I think it's good because it lets us flesh out the other side of the story because we have Soya in the uh, that part of Nebula. But we also have these other characters who are, like, fighting against them. And that makes it, like, really hard to figure out who are the good guys. Yeah, yeah. My issue, though, with the side characters is, like, we get, like, the episode of backstory and stuff. But then it doesn't feel like they do much more. At least not yet. It... That's... There's so many of these characters. And I initially thought they were going to go in a different direction where they're going to try to flesh out a lot of these characters as much as they can. I thought it was going to be a little bit formulaic. I thought like every episode they were going to have them like, you know, fight their past or whatever. Um, Yeah. Like an, uh, like a villain of the week, except they're the hero. Yeah. But it it kind of, it didn't do that. It it went in. Yeah. Like it started going that way, but they like wrapped up that uh, plot line pretty quickly. Yeah. And And that brings up like, so many just cool things about this series that they just don't like one of the most disappointing things about playing it with is is easily the the execution is just not all there for a lot of these things um 
even like Soya. Soya is pretty interesting because he's kind of like the villain in this series, but right. it it doesn't feel as good as it I, I think it should. Yeah, it's like at the start it was interesting because like he is a villain going after revenge. But then as we see more of it, it's not that's not really what he's after. At least he's not portrayed that way. Yeah, it he's like, or can it, to compare, like, uh, from Avatar The Last Airbender, you have Zuko, who is one of the main characters, but he is a villain for the majority of the show. And, like, he's shown sympathetically, but you know what, like, what he's doing is wrong. With Soya, it's not really that way. Right, right. Soya is... I thought for a moment we are going to have, like, a, a, a nice anti-hero, but it's, it's... It's almost like that's just kind of, like, a really, like... That's just a thing about him. It's not really like a main character thing. It, it just feels like a weird trait they kind of push to the side a little bit almost. Yeah, and it's like he's kind of, like at first he's after revenge, but then it feels like he's just kind of doing that because that's what he needs to do and not like it coming from his desire. Yeah, and I kind of wish it would go more into that, but it's... Like show his weaknesses as a character. I just... Or as a person. I think a lot of these characters just need more development in general. Um, I, I think, well, not all of them. I think Ginko and Sensei are okay. Like, I think they're some of those characters that you kind of want to have a little bit, be a little bit more mysterious and stuff. Yeah, I think Ginko we learned enough about in episode 7 that I think we understand at least which, where she's coming from. Yeah. So... Yeah, and they have this, like, new faction they introduce, and they have their characters, so I don't know if they can go back to the others to, like, flesh them out more. So, like you were saying, they might need a season two if they want to, like, fully flesh everyone out, which I don't know if they're going to aim to do that. Yeah, I I don't know. It, a lot of, like, the complaints I have, I think, would definitely be answered in, season, in a possible season two. Yeah, or just a... Like, or stretching this out so it would take two seasons as opposed to kind of rushing through this initial arc. Uh, so, what do you think about the backgrounds in this anime? I personally thought they looked very good, especially kind of putting them up against the competition we have this year. I mean, in my opinion, the best looking backgrounds there are this season is Banana Fish, but I think this is. I think this is like a number two for me in terms of backgrounds currently. One of the examples I would give is one of the episodes they go to like a playground and you see in the background that there's like a, you know, there's play sets everywhere and stuff like that, but they're all kind of like rusted and stuff and they're kind of chipped away. Um, And that kind of like, there's also one point, I think it's episode seven where one of them goes into like space subspace or something like that and you see like the earth in the background and all this cool stuff and also just like this the sky boxes in this anime the sky at night when they have a fight at night looks so damn good um yeah what are your overall thoughts on the backgrounds and stuff i actually didn't pay much attention to them so i'll just assume that everything you say is right and i agree completely (laughs) all right uh (laughs) Uh, anime looks good, says the Sea Tactics. <laughs> the Sea Tactics is always right, except for when he's not, but this time he's right. What do you think about the fights? The fights are... I love them, but what do you think about them? Yeah, the fights are cool, especially since we don't really know like how they'll end up with each character trying to use like different techniques. Especially as we get further along and they start like unleashing more power, like uh, the one girl who turned into a dragon to fight. Yes, yes. Uh, when Harumi turned into a, 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 a giant undead-looking dragon from Dark Souls, I, I mean, that fight was. I love that fight. I it, yeah, and what I, I liked that they had it like after you had a couple of more traditional fights against like the hero of the week, and now you have like everything changing. The characters are forced to like work together despite being on opposite sides, mm-hmm. uh, and like you, yeah. <laughs> At episode three, there was this really cool part where one of them uses like a giant laser beam attack. I think it's Takashi. Uh, it just one the beams like like there's 
to me, like, some of the best-looking beam battles in anime is, like, Yu Yu Hakusho and, like, DBZ. This, by far, is he's got some of the best beams, like, just energy beams that I've seen in a long time. Uh, and, and, and another thing about the fights is they're so well-directed and paced so well. I, I never feel like they're just fighting always at 100%. There's, there's a nice build-up to it initially, and sometimes you may get a fight like where Harumi turns into a dragon where it just comes out of left field and it hits you and you're like, did that just happen? That's, that's awesome. Or like when Sensei comes out of nowhere. It, it's just a great, great Or like how Sensei starts drinking so they can fly. Yeah, yeah. Or, or the part where, <laughs> where Sensei devours Soya and, uh, and, and um, God, what's your name? Ginkgo. Uh-huh. I, I love that, and then like the inside of his mouth is like the universe, right? It, yeah, and all that weird stuff. Like, how did they come up with this idea? <laughs> cocaine. Yeah, going with cocaine. It's got to be cocaine. Yeah, remember, kids, don't do drugs, or you'll make anime like this. Yeah. Um, before I pass it off, I guess uh, there's a lot of references. There's some references to like Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer with like the figures that that soya has i believe those are some one of them at least is a character from lucifer lucifer and the biscuit hammer but there's also as you could guess just from looking at the cover there's there's probably going to be lots of references to mecca and evangelion and there is just a lot of references to a lot of things in this in at least the way i remembered in episode seven with the evangelion reference with all the crosses yeah. In a way, I think that was kind of fitting because they were able to use that reference to get their point across more, like showing this is what happened to uh, these people. Yeah. And so in a way, that was like using people's knowledge of the reference to like further drive the point on as opposed to just being there because. Yeah, it definitely felt like there was a reason to see what I was seeing. And I, I think definitely I can I just have a feeling the director was like, all right, we need something to represent this. With a thing from Evangelion. Evangelion. Let's, do, let's do that. And it just wor- it worked out for him. And it worked out as a reference. And it worked out as an actual good kind of plot device. Right. And that's kind of like the, the cool ingenuity of this anime sometimes, I guess. Is the way they use their references and how stylized it is. It's, it's a totally unique anime. Yeah, I, I have not seen anime quite like it. At the most, it sometimes feels like other shows, but it's definitely something unique. Yeah, I I don't know if it's successful in it every time, but when it counts, I think you can kind of be a little bit dependable. It can be a dependable anime, and you can definitely enjoy it. Um, yeah. I would say it is the best anime at doing what it's doing because it's the only one. Uh, yeah. No, I totally agree. Any questions or thoughts you have about it? Oh, I have some notes here, so let's go down those. Uh, the first question I had in my notes was, what is the topic for this podcast again? <laughs> uh, playing it with. <laughs> okay, uh, let me add that. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting is how it has a lot of cliches, but it is able to use them in interesting ways. Like in episode one, you have the main character, like he's new school, has amnesia, uh, wants meat, all these things you expect from a main character. And instead of feeling like overly cliche, it felt kind of retro and like a callback of like, this is why I like anime. Yeah, it felt refreshing. Yeah. Seeing all that stuff. It almost reminded me of how I feel about Angel Beats because Angel Beats is the most anime anime I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. Angel Beats is like really anime. Yeah, and so is this. So it's just having like all these fun tropes that I like, especially for a show that is kind of about the whole like uh, fun factor. Yeah. So like, you want anime fun? Here's anime fun for you. Yeah, and and it doesn't, it doesn't try to like beat you over the head too much with anything. It's at its, it's you know soft serve ice cream at the worst. You know. Exactly, it's, it's and easy. you can't complain about soft serve ice cream. You can't, unless you're just a weird weird man who's not grateful for anything ever yes if you don't like soft serve ice cream you'll probably not like this anime <laughs> I... yes <laughs> if you don't like the idea of soft serve you will not like this anime okay now i really want ice cream i know what i'm doing after we finish recording oh, i haven't had ice cream in so long don't 
Why are we talking about ice cream? <laughs> okay, uh, new topic. Back to cliches. And what I found interesting with all the cliches is that a lot of them become justified. Like, he has the dream about the dragon, and the reason he's having all these dreams is because of his psychic powers. Because he is from that race that's developed the powers. Yeah, we didn't even talk about, like, just, like, there's, like, other factions and planets <laughs> and different races of people. Yeah, because you have, uh, like, you have the Earth and the traditional heroes like fighting to preserve humanity's strength and all that and then you have these alien invaders which are nebula which nebula that has multiple factions are kind of fighting each other but both have the same goal and then you have the main guy and his planet and how they tied into all this it's crazy and then you have that other thing that was just introduced i don't even even remember the name of but it was in episode seven so if you know the show you know what i'm talking about yeah and so crazy yeah, it's like all these different things end up kind of making sense with how the characters are the way they are. Uh, like you have uh, Ginkgo not serving meat because like her race is vegetarian. And then if uh, Soja, who is his race, and they're like a kind of warrior sort of race. So it makes sense that they would want meat. So yeah, that's another place where it kind of fits. This is stuff I didn't even notice. You're just blowing my mind right here. I think... Just from hearing all this stuff, the writing is actually quite exceptional in some places, Places, I guess. Yeah, it's like it doesn't make any sense until it does, and then it's awesome. Yeah. I, I kind of like anime like this, though, for that, because it's like, I don't need everything explained to me right away like some anime like to do. I don't need it to be super simple sometimes. I kind of want to be bombarded with just things. Well, one of the things, like... The way I would put it is I like it when shows can have an effect called I have no idea what's going on, but I want to see more. Yeah. So, like, throw me into something weird. I'll be interested for a while based off that, and that'll give them time to, like, build up an interesting story and then slowly answer questions. That's kind of why I watched four episodes of Darling in the Bronx, actually. It's because I was like, this, I'm interested. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the same way with me. It it doesn't last more than a few episodes because at that point you might get bored and not care because it hasn't given you something interesting. It's like uh, one of my other favorite uh, mech anime, Zega Pain, which has its same initial setup. Like, it looks like a high school slice of life. And then why are these people piloting robots <laughs> in this end of the world type thing? And like, how does everything tie together? I was like, I had no idea what was going on, but I wanted to see more. And then eventually I got more, and it was amazing. And you should all watch the Zega Pain. There's, there's a mystique to it, right? There's a mystique exactly. to Planet With. There's a mystique to these kinds of anime that... You know, there's not a lot of mystique to a lot of anime sometimes, but when you get a, an anime that does have mystique and it like it's actually an interesting mystique to it that you don't really kind of know about, but you do, and it's not forced, it you want more of it, and I think this yeah. is one of those easily. Right. And um, what other notes do I have? Yeah, we talked about it some before, just how we're not really sure like who is good and who's evil here. And even seven episodes in, it's not really clear. Like, you have characters who are antagonistic to each other, but we're not told, like, here is the right one, here is the wrong one. Right. Um, I don't think there needs to, at least right now, be, like, a a certain side. Uh, Yeah, I think, I hope they keep it this way, because that makes it, not only do we not know what side is good, but that also makes it so we don't know what side is going to win. It all it almost also feels like there's a third party involved. Well, they're kinda they're like four parties already. Well, I mean like a person the mastermind behind all of this, there's like there's like a singular dude somewhere just controlling it all and he wants this guy oh, this way. Yeah. And like this is the big evil, right? Yeah, and I wonder how they do that. Like all the other sides have to come together to fight him, maybe? Yeah. Power Ranger style. Okay. Crazy idea, but what if the big evil going is the uh, girl who's like the main character's friend? Ginko? The, the girl. Or, or no, uh, no uh, the brown haired one. The, the girl who likes Soya? Yeah, Nozomi. The, the girl yeah, whose Nozomi. last name no one can pronounce. Uh, Nozomi Takamagahara. Exactly. I, I guess I could do it. Okay. Uh, I, that, that would be kind of crazy. Yeah. 
That yeah, that would come out of left field. No one could see it coming, but maybe there's lots of foreshadowing all along about it. Or maybe. Like, why else would she be in the occult club? That's another point. That's another point. Yeah, I mean. It's also late at night and my brain's firing in like 12 different directions. So we're going to go with these crazy ideas. <laughs> yeah, we just talk about crazy stuff and hopefully it pays off. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just like go with a crazy idea. Maybe I'm right one percent of the time. Well, just come up with a hundred crazy ideas. Hey, I guessed a couple of the things that happened in Kill a Kill, and I was right. So it works. Exactly. Uh, yes, uh, go watch our Kill a Kill podcast. By the way, it's on my channel, and it's amazing and awesome. I and it has music lollies. I actually didn't know you released the Anime Nomad podcast for that. I think I tagged you on Twitter when I came out with it. Uh, was I gone during that week? Maybe. That was like uh, a week ago. Yeah. So, so like I, on I the didn't see it. 13th. Okay, then. My bad. <laughs> uh, where were we in my notes? Oh, one of the things I thought was really cool is uh, all the ideas about like power and what it means to have it and what you should do with it and what people do with it. Because I think that's like one of the central themes of the show. Yeah, like... Like the evolution of love and stuff, and like yeah, it was like a race can choose the evolution of love, and I forget what the other one does, but it's like evolution of like war or something like that. Yeah, I, and, and that's another thing I really like about this. It's just there's a lot. It feels like there's like a lot of ideologies at play sometimes. It feels like there's a lot of. It's almost kind of like fate <laughs> in a weird way. You just have a lot of people like factions who believe in a lot of different things, and they battle. <laughs> because of those different their, their thoughts i think it's also interesting because the question is is humanity's continued evolution a good thing or a bad thing like what is the nature of humanity yeah because in like Gurren log you say oh humanity it will become greater we can create the heavens and all that right well in here it's much more i wouldn't say it's like uh cynical all the way but it's like there are two paths humanity can go down it's not certain which one yeah, it feels like there's like a lot of little commentary bits about a lot of it. It definitely feels like something that's written by a guy who pays attention to a lot of like he's a philosopher. I feel like definitely. Yeah, there's definitely a good amount about it, and I don't think I've ever seen a show explore like power in this way. I don't. I, well, yeah, I, I don't know, but then again, I've never really asked that question, so. It's a good good thing to bring up, though, for sure. Um, I do I do just love like the really sometimes it just goes really philosophical and deep, and it comes out of nowhere, and you're like, hold on. Yeah, like that dog and cat scene in episode six, I think, is what we yeah. were talking about earlier. Yeah, the, the evolution of love and stuff. Um, it just comes out of nowhere, and you're like, what what is happening? But then you like, they start talking, and you're like. Huh, this is like some pretty thoughtful stuff. Like and I think maybe a lot of people will kind of get like I feel like there's so many people that will have arguments about this and think the show's wrong for for one reason or another, but I think it's definitely there's a lot of different viewpoints put into this anime. I don't think it's definitely just like the author's viewpoint here. Well, at least so far it doesn't feel like it's like uh proclaiming any certain viewpoint as correct. There are all these different ideas yes. that are in conflict. Yes. So maybe by the end they'll like have to make a decision, but I think the fact that it's asking these questions is letting the viewer like figure out the answer for themselves. And we're talking about it, so it's interesting. It, yeah, it's and... extremely compelling. Oh, SAO season two was another one where it felt like something similar, where in that case it was like bringing up the idea of using guns for power and like how they could be damaging, but at the same time they could also help people. So like it was like asking all these questions before eventually coming down with its answer but it took a while to get there i didn't know sao got that deep man <laughs> yeah that's part of my review that has yet to be released we'll get to it eventually check out rising's reviews subscribe to the channel hit the hit the hit the bell ring the bell make sure to like the yes. video for more rising yep. stuff. i like the video subscribe and go to walmart buy a chinese gong and ring that bell exactly ring all the bells you can damn it <laughs> Exactly. Like the one at Arby's to tell me did a good job. Bring that bell. Uh, yeah. Bring off. Just stop. Never stop ringing them bells. Yes. 
And uh, back to my notes before we get sidetracked again. So uh, the last thing I thought was interesting was the idea of the heroes having to like uh, let go of their fantasy when they go to uh, destroy the monsters. Yes, I love this. This is the best thing about the show. I don't know if it's the best thing because I kind of want them to do more with the idea. But it's definitely an interesting idea because they're, in order to be heroes, to save the world, they have to be willing to let go of their impossible desires, basically. I, one of the most just, the first two episodes did this really well. I think it was the se- second episode that really hit me, where uh, one of the characters is, is experiencing her past and her mother is there. And she wants to, or maybe it's a he, I don't know. They, they want to stay with their mother forever. And then the person realizes, no, he can't stay there forever. He has to move on. He has to. Wasn't that like the uh, guy whose like, mother died in the fire? Oh, that may be the first episode then. That, yeah. was first, that was episode one. I forget what episode two was. Um, I think it was maybe Miu and her stuff. Uh, twin-tailed, pink-haired girl. Um, uh maybe another dude i don't remember but anyways you know he he wants to stay there forever and staying there forever of course is him being defeated uh yeah and basically killed right so it's like he can't stay in his fantasy yeah he can't he has to move on from that that heartbreaking loss even though it is his mother he has to move forward because you can't stay in the past and i loved that and then it got what was it? The guy who had like the harem fantasy. Yes, the and harem again, fantasy. It was like it was, it was like, like your fantasy can be different things. Maybe it's wanting to be with your family, or maybe it's wanting to like escape into a fantasy world, or because like going to see your mother that is a fantasy world because it's not real. Right. Yeah. Um, I think the one with the old man with the harem explores lust and stuff like that. Right. I, I think definitely these these. These these weird scenes initially, or these sometimes really deep scenes, they may seem like one thing on on the surface, just like this whole anime seems like one thing on the surface. But once you kind of analyze it a little bit and and, and think about it, there's a lot going on here. Like that, yeah, it's it can be really weird, but there's a point to it. Yeah, and a lot of it definitely feels maybe not intentional at all. I I think. And I think that's on purpose. I think some of that is supposed to be there just to get you thinking about, you know, it's, if once again, it feels very philosophical. It feels right. like there is there could be a lot of different viewpoints on this. But it's not a show that's just bashing your head with philosophy so much that you can't enjoy it for the story that it is. Yeah, this isn't this isn't like fate or anything like that. It's, yeah. it's not. I was gonna say this isn't like Erga Proxy where there is an interesting story and like the philosophical is like on top of it, which lets you enjoy it more. Yeah, it feels, it just, I don't know, it's just an interesting story, and the way it goes about developing uh, its story threads and through lines, it's just, there's something about it, I don't know what it is, it's just compelling to me, and it's interesting, and it's thoughtful, and uh, that's what I love about it, I guess. Yeah. All right, so I went through all my notes. Were there any other questions that you had? Uh, best girl. Uh, zero two. I didn't know zero two was in Planet with. <laughs> you especially what? Sh- okay, uh, tail red. Oh. Well, okay, that's still not Planet with, but. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I say best girl is Snoopy. Snoopy's a dog. Exactly. Okay. I can't argue with Fluffy. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Fluffy. <laughs> oh, Fluffy it, is best girl. There's just a lot of fluff in this anime to begin with. You get all the these bots exploding into fluff. Yes. San- and I wanted a puppy. The, the subtitle of this should be Planet With Fluff. <laughs> so does this mean Mr. Kitty is going to show up in the podcast? I, I'm glad he didn't, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know where he is right now, but he's probably somewhere. Having fun. I would hope he's somewhere. He's waiting for the right time to punch you in the face. <laughs> I wish, I so wish I didn't delete that podcast. That was such a random moment of, what the hell? He just punched me in the face! Yep, that's all I got. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so that's our thoughts on Planet Wish. I'll, like, final thing, what do you recommend it and to who? I recommend it to all the, specifically the, the five-year-olds out there. I think the five-year-olds will get a lot from this. Um, also, so I should show this to my cousin's daughter. Also the 75-year-olds, believe it or not. I, th- I think they're going to experience a lot they haven't experienced. Uh, because, you know, the 75-year-olds, they're, they, they don't know about that anime. So I wonder what happened if I shared it with that aunt, what she would think. Uh, I wonder what a lot of people would think if I showed them anime for the first time. <laughs> no, if you showed them this anime. This anime. A lot of questions, probably. <laughs> a lot of Even questions. Even more questions than we have. Even more than we have. Like, for, like, wait, why is the robot a cat? And why is the maid girl a cat? Wait, is she a maid? Why is there a cat? <laughs> and why is the cat a robot? <laughs> what is cat? What is cat doping? <laughs> and why is the spaceship a cat? You better not be doing drugs, young man. <laughs> okay, well, for my recommendations, I would recommend it, but with two caveats or two, yeah, we'll go with caveats. First of all, I don't think this is a good show to watch weekly because, of, like, how dense it is. Yeah. For like, sure. after I saw episode one, I was going to, like, put it on hold until it ended. But then it, I decided to do this podcast with C, so I had to catch up. And I'm glad I, like, watched five episodes, like, right after each other, kind of. Yeah. Like, within the same week. Yeah. And then I watched episode seven, but it was, like, a week after six. I felt I kind of forgot some of the things that happened before. Uh-huh. I, I, right. it's just, yeah. Yeah. If there's a season two that ever gets announced for this, I... I'd wait until season two finish, finishes airing, to right. be honest. Yeah, and then my other caveat is that if you're a person named Astro Coon, you should definitely watch it. Astro Coon. I agree. Yes, I so I think we're uh, about to wrap up this uh, podcast thing. Probably should have wrapped it up a while ago. Yeah, uh, we can fix it in editing or just not fix it because random uh, tangents are fun and good for increasing average view time. Avi can fix it in post. <laughs> All right, uh, so see after a thing, tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at ctacticsyt on Twitter. That's right, I got a new username for people who know my old username on Twitter. Uh, and uh, you can find me uh, at, well, links in the description, of course, comments, I don't know, of my channel, ctactics, just called, type in ReZero Podcast, probably find it there. And speaking of the stuff I do, I upload 10 videos a week, pretty much. Uh, I have a... Um, let's go to my second second channel first. My second channel, i got a Final Fantasy VII playthrough going on right now, and also the Fate route for the Fate State Night Vision novel. That's uh, that's that's five days a week thing. And then on my main it's channel... It's not as good as the Ilya route, though. Not as good as the Ilya route. That that got morphed into the Heaven's Feel route. And then morphed into Khalid. And then morphed into Khalid, because Khalid is the best. Uh, exactly. Shout out to my Khalid video. Yes. On on the main channel, I have starting Monday a ReZero podcast, and then Tuesday a review discussion of Eden Zero, the hero mashup among us, same guy who made Fairy Tale. Uh, Wednesday, I usually have some kind of video out, like a review or something. Thursday this week, I have a collaboration between Satsuki the Savage and myself. We'll be uploading a video about Happy Sugar Life and Future Diary. And then oh, Friday, a banana fish video. Bananas are good. Bananas are great. And uh, on my channel, I did not have 10 videos a week. I have one video, hopefully. Not always. But if you're new to my channel, I make reviews, top lists, uh, discussions, uh, whatever else I feel like sometimes. But do you make reviews top lists? Don't worry about it. This, I wonder which comment will get this video demonetized. Can you even monetize? No. <laughs> Go to Rising's Patreon. That it doesn't exactly exist. Oh, it does. I saw it. I mean, yes, you saw it, but that doesn't mean it, it exists. It, it, it's definitely, it definitely exists. All right, if, or just like mail me money. That works too. <laughs> mail. <laughs> just mail me money. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Like, if there's, like, cash in my uh, uh, mailbox, whatever that thing's called, I will not be complaining. Hey, 
If I went to my mailbox and every time I opened it, there was cash in there, just a random amount of cash, I'd be like, all right, I mean, it's in there, it's mine now. All right, so I need to be able to see, like, 22 pennies. Oh, I don't, pennies are annoying. <laughs> no, I actually want to do that for my friend uh, when he graduates. I'll just, like, uh, mail him an envelope filled with $20 in pennies. <laughs> Wouldn't that break the envelope? I don't know. It would be one of those, like, envelopes which is, like, padded and stuff. All right, so goodbye, YouTube uh, watching people things. Bye-bye.